Mr. Tan, if I could just start with you. Let me start with a, a pretty fundamental question. Do you believe that illegal entry at our borders, any of our borders, should remain a crime? There's debate about this, so I'd just like to get your, your view on it. Do you think it ought to remain a, a crime? Senator Hawley, thank you very much for that question. Uh, when I think about uh, when I was nominated for this role, the very first thing I thought about the Department of Homeland Security was that it, its main mission is to safeguard and protect our homeland. Uh, and it does it through 240,000 great employees, uh, you know, folks who are on the border, CBP and others. And our main and, and part of that mission is to enforce our nation's laws. So I absolutely support enforcing our nation's laws. Uh, and if confirmed, I would look forward to uh, reviewing all of the different elements, some of them the one that you just discussed, uh, to understand what are all the different options that are on the table uh, to include potentially the one you just discussed. Well, so, do, so you don't have a position now, you're saying? I mean, you, you don't, you're not ready to say today that you think that illegal entry ought to remain a crime? As a private citizen, and then if confirmed, I would absolutely commit to enforcing our nation's laws, for sure. I'm, I'm asking if you think it ought to, as a policy matter, if it ought to remain a crime. It's currently a crime. There's a lot of debate about whether or not it should remain a crime. Do you think it should remain a crime? That's my question. Yeah. Again, I, I just want to restate, Senator Hawley, respectfully, that if confirmed, I would absolutely inform our nation's laws. Okay. So, in other words, you're not going to answer my question about remaining a crime. That's interesting. I think it's not a particularly difficult question. It's one I pose to multiple nominees, I think it is, I think it's telling. I think it's very telling. Um, I'm asking you this because I think it's, it's vital that, that DHS enforce our immigration laws, also support law enforcement as they work to control surges in illegal migration like we're seeing right now. I'm worried that it's not happening, and that's why I'm asking. Just this Tuesday, the Washington Post reported ICE agents saying it, I'm quoting now, it feels like the administration doesn't have our backs. Under the new administration's rules restricting enforcement, ICE has carried out fewer than 3,000 deportations last month, which is a record low. And I think it's critical that ICE be able to continue to execute its mission unhindered and ensure that uh, crossing the border illegally carries consequences. So let me ask you this. If confirmed, will you fully and completely support ICE and its mission of interior enforcement? As the if confirmed, Senator Hawley, one of my roles, uh, and I discussed it in my opening statement, will be to be the Chief Operating Officer for the Department of Homeland Security. In that role, my mission and the way I tend to lead and tend to manage is to ensure that I would empower, enable, and support all of the components to include ICE in the execution of their mission. Okay, good. So you would, you would, you would fully and completely support them and their mission of interior enforcement. That's a yes. My, my statement is that if confirmed, I would support ICE in their full execution of their mission at that time. Okay. I, th I think that's a yes. Maybe we can try for some yes or no answers. In the first four months of 2021, we had over 530,000 illegal crossing attempts at the border. Do you think that this is an acceptable level of illegal entries? As a, when I, Senator Hawley, thanks for that statement and for that question. When I think about what's uh, happening at the Southwest border, the first thing I think about, and it's a personal one, I'm a private citizen right now, but as a private citizen, I think about my families uh, escape from communist China. I think about the fact that they were in a country that they wanted to stay in, likely, nationalist China, China. and then World War II happened and communist China came in and it was likely they are gonna be persecuted. And when I think about what's happened to the Southwest border, I think about all those families who are coming from the Northern Triangle who are escaping uh, likely persecution. Why would they want to leave that country? And that's, that's where my first, as a private citizen, that's where my first feelings go. And, and I view the fact that they've taken that step as one of the things that we will probably have to resolve. Again, I say this as a private citizen, uh, that's my view in terms of what's going on at the Southwest border. I know it's a personal one, and if confirmed, I look forward to working uh, with you uh, and understanding your viewpoints on what's happening at the Southwest border. So I hear you're saying that you're, you're not particularly concerned about this level of illegal migration. What I'm saying is that if confirmed, as the uh, Deputy Secretary of Homeland Security, in the role of the Chief Operating Officer, I would absolutely do everything I can to enable, empower, and support anybody who's down at the southwest border to execute their mission. Well, but I, I'm, I'm trying to understand what your viewpoints are here, and you're, you're rather systematically evading my question. So 
you're, you're not being conform, confirmed to a judgeship where you have to be neutral. You're being confirmed to a policy role. So let me just try one more time so the record can reflect. I'm asking you, there have been 530,000 illegal attempts, crossing attempts at the border in the first four months of 2021. I want to know if you think that that's a problem. Your answer suggests you don't think it's a problem because you, you understand why these people are coming. I didn't hear a word about the cartels, by the way. I didn't hear a word about human trafficking. I didn't hear a word about drug smuggling. I didn't hear a word about any of that, which frankly worries me. But let's try again. Do you think it's a problem or, or not? If confirmed, Senator Hawley, my, my view is I've, and you've, uh, I think you know about my, my biography and my experiences. I think you heard my response to Senator Hassan before. There is, it is a, it's a tough situation uh, at the Southwest border. It's a tough situation for all those families who are escaping persecution from the Northern Triangle and coming there. Uh, there are thousands, you've mentioned the statistics, there are thousands of migrants who have come to the border. And I have a history, and the reason I mentioned my bio before Senator Hawley is I have a history, I have an experience of being airdropped, I put in air quotes, airdropped uh, into difficult and tough situations. Uh, and I believe that if confirmed as the uh, deputy secretary, one of my roles, again, as the chief operating officer is to empower, enable, and support those who are executing the mission. The 240,000 employees, they're not all obviously at the border who are executing that mission. Well, all I can say to that is the, the fact that you don't seem to be concerned about, you say it's a complicated situation. The, what's not complicated about it is, is that the cartels control the southern border. What's not complicated about it is, is that every person who crosses that southern border is doing so with the help of the cartels. The cartels are exploiting these people that you talk, they're exploiting them. They are exploiting children. They are exploiting migrants. They are running drugs that are flooding into my state and killing people in my state. That's not complicated. And I'd like to see some appreciation of the fact that the exploitation of children that's happening at our southern border, the smuggling of children that's happening at our southern border, and the drugs that are pouring across that border and into states like mine is a serious problem that you take seriously and want to do something about. But I haven't heard, of, I've given you multiple chances now, we've consumed seven minutes, and I haven't heard a word of that from you, which frankly I think is unbelievable. I've got questions for the rest of you. I'll give those to you for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.